This video is going to be controversial because I'm about to debunk one of the most well-liked financial YouTubers around with a channel name Tom Nash. But one thing I promise is not to sensationalize the story, but to use critical analysis based on science to discuss why he's wrong over the XCM. But before that, let's sweeten up the video with that intro. I've been teaching biology since 2004. On this channel, I hope to simplify and explain the science behind the companies that's driving the genomics revolution one video at a time. First, I'd like to say that I respect him a lot because of his in-depth financial knowledge as well as the way he does DCF analysis of companies. Not only that, I'm also in full agreement with his views of China companies as well. If you want an understanding of whether a company is managing their financials well, he is the guy you should at least check in with. However, the decision to invest in certain companies cannot be just about the numbers. Let me explain. Especially if a company's products and services is based on the management of medical diseases, then the scientific fundamentals underlying the medical disease is far more important. If that does not check out, then no matter how well the money is managed, there will be limited upside over the long term. You don't have to believe in me because I may be wrong and this might be the ramblings of a madman. Let the science speak for itself. In his video, he talked about a company, DXCM, that produces and sells a device that continuously monitors the blood glucose concentration. Out of the 13 minutes, only one and a half minutes was spent talking about diabetes with the rest on the company's financials. In a short amount of time, the personal history was brought up as well as the pandemic lifestyle. So I want to take an opportunity to talk about the signs of the disease so that him and you can gain an understanding of the disease. Yes, this disease is fundamentally a problem with the management of blood glucose. Glucose is a monomer of carbohydrates, which in turn is a type of macronutrient found in a variety of foods that we eat. Upon digestion of carbohydrates, the glucose monomers gets absorbed into the bloodstream. This causes an increase in blood glucose concentration that needs to be managed. So in response, the pancreatic cells produce a hormone called insulin, which take the circulatory system to be distributed across the whole body. Consequently, all the cells start expressing a receptor for glucose in their cell membranes known as GLUT4. This allows glucose to enter the cells by facilitated diffusion, upon which can either be stored as glycogen in the muscle cells or liver, and additionally, used for cellular respiration which generates ATP. ATP is a way to store energy that can be hydrolyzed on demand to release the energy to power the cell's metabolic processes. As all of these occurs, the blood glucose concentration starts to decrease back to the normal range. Which leads to the next question, why would you want to take glucose out of the circulatory system? This is because glucose is very sticky and can bind to any component in the blood and as a result, reduce the function of these components. Not only that, they can increase the chances of a bacterial and yeast infection if they manage to gain access into the body past the layers of the skin. However, there are people whose body cannot manage the blood glucose concentration, and we generally refer to the phenomenon as diabetes. Diabetes can be generally divided into two groups, which is the type 1 and 2. In type 1 diabetes, there's an inability to produce insulin. This is mainly because the immune system destroys these very pancreatic cells that produce insulin, and in turn results in skyrocketing blood glucose concentrations after a meal. This is generally believed to involve both the genetic as well as the environment elements in causing the disease, and represents about 5-10% to of the entire diabetic population. The vast majority of the remaining diabetic patients suffer from type 2. This is known as insulin resistance, meaning people are overeating with foods containing a higher amount of sugars. 
the pancreas works harder to increase insulin secretion in response, but over time is unable to handle the extremely high concentration of glucose inside the blood. My students will know this as the point of saturation of GLUT4 receptors. So the thinking is, if the diabetic patients cannot manage their blood glucose concentration, then we should use the Dexcom machine to monitor the patient's blood glucose concentration, right? Not so fast as we measure the blood glucose concentrations is like the Chinese saying, wrapping fire with paper, which means it's useless. The underlying problem is glucose. As long as the patient continues to eat food containing carbohydrates, then the problem will persist. Ayo! What if one drastically cuts carbohydrates out of their diet and thereby avoid the measuring of blood glucose concentration altogether? Contrary to popular belief, you do not need carbs in your diet. In a process called gluconeogenesis, where new means new and genesis means make, other compounds can be converted to glucose. The range of nutrients where this can be done is quite diverse, from lactate to some amino acids to even fatty acids. You might be thinking, what about the making of ATP? Wouldn't that require glucose? No. Let me show you the alternative of making ATP and that it exists by first talking about how ATP is being made in the first place. Typically, the process starts off with glycolysis where glucose is broken down into pyruvate, which in turn is shuttled into the mitochondria where the link reaction occurs, followed by Krebs cycle. In doing so, the carbon skeleton of the glucose molecule is systematically broken down. During that process, electrons are transferred to the mobile electron carriers, which later contributes to the formation of the majority of the ATP through a process called oxidative phosphorylation. Now, let's take a look at how ATP can still be made without glucose. Fatty acids are a component of macronutrients known as fats, and it too have a carbon skeleton that will likewise be broken apart just like glucose. More importantly, fatty acids frequently contain more than six carbon atoms, which means molecule for molecule. Fatty acids can theoretically produce even more ATPs. To do so, first, fatty acids need to be converted to ketone bodies such as acetoacetate or beta-hydroxybutyrate in the liver. The production of the ketone bodies is also the reason why it is called the ketogenic diet. These two compounds can easily enter into the bloodstream and get to the cells that need the energy. Once they enter into the mitochondria of the cell, it can be converted to acetyl-CoA in three steps. Acetyl-CoA is the starting substrate of Krebs cycle, and the very same process occurs when using glucose, except that there is no need for glycolysis and link reaction. Which then leads to the next question, are diabetic patients who have converted to a ketogenic diet seen improvements? Yes, they have both in type 1 as well as type 2 diabetics. An additional 20 studies have been done to date that shows that the ketogenic diet have reduced the blood glucose concentrations. In this situation, where does Dexcom stand, especially when the momentum of the ketogenic diet picks up to make matters worse that is already a competitor in the exact same space? Not only that, there is one and one only product. There's nothing in the pipeline. I yo, And I'm not done yet. Don't forget that the gene editing companies are going to be looking at the correction of the genetic elements of the disease. And for all the above mentioned reasons, I'm sorry, but I'm out. For me, I take a long-term view of stocks investing and will only pick companies that align with my scientific fundamentals analysis. If it does not align with my conclusions, then I would not put money into the stock 
even if the charts or the numbers look fantastic. Does that mean that you cannot make money doing swing trades? Of course you can, but you better hold your nose close to the trade and your ears to the ground to react very quickly to situational changes of the company. And on that note, I do not think anyone can choose a company purely based on the numbers analysis. So on this note, Tom Nash, I'm afraid I disagree with you on this one. Wrapping up for today, I'm going to release a series of Odyssey exclusive videos talking about my biotech stock portfolio because it has changed again. Not only that, I will also give my thoughts about... Till the next video, you're all damn sweet because of your support of this humble little channel and I'm Benjamin Yang. <laughs>